In this video, I create a website called Cobot to converse with the Danco letters using custom GPT.ai and host it within a conversational bot. Let's create a chat bot called CoChat that allows you to interact with a website. Here we'll read the Danco letters. We have all these letters here and we'll be able to go down to the bot and type in a question and get an answer. Custom GPT.ai creates your own chat GPT with all your business content. Got a landing page, pricing. We have three custom projects for $50 a month. So what I think I'll do is let's click on this button. Let's just log in and see how we can use this product. Now I've come through to a dashboard and we've got my projects and create a project, which looks like it's in three different locations. There's some help documentation. If I click on create a project, I am taken straight to a pricing page. I wonder if I type in free. It's not showing up on the page. I've come to the home page and I typed in a question into the chat bot. Is there a free trial? Saying that they don't have a free trial at the moment, maybe they will in the future, but demand is high and they've got costs. That's fair enough. They've got a demo here. I may buy this for one month. There's a particular idea that I want to test out with this bot. Denko is this influencer that I've been following just as I learn how to develop my own brand. And what I've liked about his information is that he educates people on how to do something they're passionate about. And I'm actually passionate about technology and just teaching people about it. He has this area here called letters. All these blog posts that are written over a couple of years. I think might be a really good set of information to do a Q&A bot against. Let's go back to custom GPT and it has this idea of an XML sitemap. This is a data document that websites have, usually called something like sitemap.xml. Let's have a look at what they look like. Google Images here typed in sitemap.xml and this is usually the sort of format that they come in. But what they do in essence is create a graph of the web pages that the site owner would like you to go to. So it's not every page on the site, but it's the ones you want to go to. Hopefully when we go and have a look at Dan Coe's website, there will be a sitemap that we can use to put back into this section right here. I've headed over to the website, thedanco.com and put in sitemap.xml. And you end up with this sitemap and it looks like the way he's got it laid out is that he's got various categories. And the one I'm actually interested in is called letters.sitemap. I'll just click on that. And what we should see is a list of letters that he has written. I guess they're just articles. If we were to click on one of them, it should take us to that article. We've got an article, we've got a video, we've got a whole lot of text and it's the text that's in each of these articles that I would like to do a question and answer bot against. I've just grabbed the URL. Let's paste it in here. The danco.com letters.xml. It says that it's okay. I guess this is where we create a project. I have danco, items found, items indexed. I've got no information here. I clicked on this button and I ended up getting this list of documents. Some of them are queued. I guess that's reading those articles off the web. We're now up to 69 items indexed. We've got 85 founds. We've got some words indexed. What happens if we go in one more time? Missing or queued are now loaded. What I'll do now is test this bot out. Click on this ask me anything button. We have new conversation. The question I've asked is what is Dan Co known for and why would I subscribe to his bot? We'll just click this button and it's starting to come up thinking at the moment. Dan Co is known as a writer and brand advisor for creators, influencers and social media figures that are in the seven to eight figure range. He has a deep interest in exploring human potential, lifestyle design, and one-person business. You know what I might do? I might ask this same question 
in ChatGPT and compare what that comes up with. We'll head over to ChatGPT. I'm running the GPT-4 model and I've got basically the same question coming through right here. This is very typical of ChatGPT to come up with this as my last update, September 2001. I'm really happy with this custom GPT bot already. I know that Dan has increased in popularity really quickly over a few years. It's just given me generic terms of just do it yourself, which is a pain in the bum. So if we go back to the bot, we've got additional information. I might just read this. Subscribing to his blog, The Code Letter, is good for a couple of reasons. Gain insights about life and business. He offers a free planner. He offers a course, two-hour writer. This is one of the things I'm interested in learning is just how to become a better writer. The way I like to interact with ChatGPT, I really do want to become a better writer while using ChatGPT as a tool to enhance myself. I want to bring these two concepts together. And he shares his experience on in digital economics to help you productize yourself, brand, content, marketing. The other thing that I really enjoy when I listen to his YouTube videos, this idea of building a business around what you love doing, five different sources, a message from a recovering atheist, how to find God, learn this skill if you want to thrive in the next 10 years. As I look through them all, they're all coming out of the letters on his website. This is great. It's drawing inspiration directly off his blog. First follow-up question is, as a new business owner creating content on YouTube, what are the first five steps that I should focus on? Keep it as a simple list. And I'm using my understanding of prompt engineering that I use all the time with ChatGPT to formulate these questions. Custom GPT has come up with five answers. Understand high-performing content, build an email list, develop your ideas. This is about writing and creating a product or service and consider paid growth. One of the reasons I started following Dan is that I want to learn how to write and to do email marketing. I don't currently have an email list, but by the time I publish this video, I will, and I'll make sure there's a link in the description. I currently don't have anything to sell, but custom gpt.ai I have an affiliate program i'll put an affiliate link in the description and that would help the channel if you decide that this is a product you want to explore further and the last point here consider paid growth these are all pretty good answers but the reason i've created a bot against this particular set of information is that i want to learn the art of creating youtube titles headlines those sorts of messages that either convert, they create curiosity. People go, wow, I want to know about that topic. And I think that should be what my next prompt should be about. So I've created a question here. I want to know how to write titles for YouTube, Twitter, and blog posts that create engagement, curiosity, and clicks. Where do I start? Understand your audience. Using power words, it's given an example of a few power words. Have a clear and short title, especially for Twitter and YouTube. Use numbers, so five ways other platforms create a sense of urgency. And one of the things I could follow up with a question is, what does that mean? What are examples of creating a sense of urgency and testing different titles? Now, let's see how I have done this in the past and how this is going to add a lot of value to what I do in the future. Head over to ChatGPT where I have a lot of bots that I've created in the past. A few that are important start with the letter YT. It's for YouTube. We had the YouTube description, YouTube title, creation tips one, creation tips two. And these are variations of bots that I've created just for doing YouTube titles. If we were to click on one of them, you can see that I often just give it a simple keyword and a title that just comes out of my head. What did I think this video happened to be about in layman's terms? I end up getting a bunch of relatively good YouTube titles. I sometimes need to edit them a little bit, but it does a lot of the heavy lifting for me. 
And the way I initially created this bot about six months ago, you are a specialist in YouTube title creation. I preloaded it with a bunch of information that I learned from people like Mr. Beast and watching different YouTube influencers who were top of their game, how they wrote headlines. This has been pretty good for me so far, but it's a monkey see, monkey do approach to using ChatGPT. These days I have more skills in the area of automating ChatGPT through programming and through learning through people like Dan Co. I can also start to understand how what it means to be a good writer, the psychology of headlines. I'd like to feed knowledge into my title and description generation bots. And this is what led me to trialing custom GPT. AI. I think it might be useful to do something with this chatbot. Maybe we can put it on our website or HTML page. One of the things I've noticed is if I come back to my projects, I wasn't sure how to get back into the chat. I know there's a question here, but I don't see previous chats. I did find out if that you click on the ask me anything, you can get to previous chats over here on the left previous chat bot we've got a background we've got a logo maybe that can be dan co if we click over on settings we have the ability to go to let's click on this user experience conversation settings custom persona oh this is cool this is probably like a system prompt in chat gpt but i think this is the one i want to work with we have a color have a background other information we will upload a new image. I might create one with mid journey. So the sharing has, we've got embeds. This is the sort of stuff we'd want on a HTML page. I'll just turn that off for now because I'm not sure whether I need to do that after updating this information. Just brought mid journey up. It's Harry Potter in Pixar. Some Donald Duck. And let's head over to this window because it's a Danko chatbot. Might as well use the likeness of him. Copy image address should be good enough. I'm just going to do something really simple. Paste image of his profile in the style of Steve Irwin. Bill Ocker, Australian legend with a crocodile. That look interesting. They're okay. This one's pretty good. This one, I think, if I go back and look at the original image, he's looking off to the right, I think think that might be a good one to work with. We'll do an upscale on number four. We could also do number two, but four will do. I've uploaded his image. I've set the color to black. I'm not going to worry about the background image. What I'll do now is I'll take a little bit of time out just to create a HTML page that might be able to host this particular embedding. Everything appears to be working now on the chatbot. The only challenge I've got now is the color scheme here. Let's go over to mid journey and I've gone and created a few images here. Just looking for a color that might fit in. I've just gone dark blue streaks with light on a background. I better do the aspect ratio 16, nine, and we will just try one of them out. Maybe this one, we'll see what it does. Let's head into the chatbot and we've got this change image that we can click on here. Downloaded a couple. I reckon we'll work with that one. Let's, do we have a save? We have a save button. Let's head back to the website here. We can just hit refresh and there we go.